How's it going everybody? My name is Loki and this video tutorial is brought to you by MachineSkills.com. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about audio and MIDI routing from Machine 2.0 to Ableton Live 9. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and just load in a copy of Machine 2, which I've already done, as you can see. I'm just going to show you routing with kick, snare, and hats only. Obviously, you can expand on this, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to do three tracks. So go ahead and load in three MIDI tracks, and the shortcut for that is Command-Shift-T. Um, I believe that's just Control-Shift-T on a Windows system. So just do that three times. Um, after that, we're going to load in an external uh, instrument on each track. Just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and rename these tracks. So it's going to be kick, whoops, snare, and hats. Okay, um, after that, the next thing we want to do is on all of the tracks down here, the MIDI 2, we're going to set to machine. And um, these are the MIDI channels. Now, it's a little bit, uh, with Machine 2, it's a little bit different than uh, Machine 1, if you're familiar with MIDI routing at all. But um, what we're going to have to do with this one is we're going to have to have each instrument be on a separate uh, MIDI channel. So we'll have the kick be on one. Okay. Uh, the snare. We'll have that on two. And we'll have the hi-hats on three. Okay, now going back to the kick real quick. Uh, this part's really important. Audio from. Um, the way that machine is set up is you have, essentially you have 16 outputs. Um, you have one that's like your main output, which is not here. As you can see, out one is not here because that automatically just outputs to the, the channel that machine is on. So for the kick, we're going to have to do output to two. And over here, we're going to go output to three for snare and output four for the hats. Now, one thing I want to mention, um, when you, if you ever need to uh, change the MIDI settings on here, um, like for example, if I go ahead and just change this to four or something, it looks as though the audio from did not change, but if you click it, you can see that it went to, uh, from audio four, it went to, uh, I'm sorry, from out four, it went to out two. Um, that was initially driving me nuts because I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. So just a little helpful tip. All right, so the next thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and open up machine, and we're just going to load in any drum kit. Um, let's do something very distinctive. Load in the tight kit, and we can close up the browser with that button. One thing I wanted to show you that's quite different from machine one is the new mixer window over here. Very pleasant. This is incredibly awesome <laughs> from uh, the previous version. Um, by the way, you can also get to the screen by simply hitting tab on your keyboard. So you can just tab back and forth. Um, one thing I want to show you here, though, it's very important, is uh, this little I.O. button. When I click that, it shows me all the ins and outs for my audio and MIDI. Um, as you can see, everything's kind of um, mapped out to the group outs. So that's kind of what we're going to be messing with. Um, essentially, when you're, like, for example, if I go to the outputs and the inputs here, so all of this control, again, can just be done straight from here. It makes it very convenient than having to flip in and out, you know, each sound and routing out everything separately. You can just do it all from the mixer page, which makes it very, very convenient. All right, so uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and continue. And what we're going to try to do is route out the kick, uh, the snare, and the hi-hat to individual tracks that, uh, that we created. So 
so first things first uh, let's go back to the other screen and create our own pattern whoops all right and we'll just do something relatively simple just simple kick snare <laughs> and uh, hi-hats on that Simple enough. So as you can see, um, this might be fine in certain cases, but your outputs are uh, going just out of the machine instrument here. So uh, we're gonna go to the mixer view and we're gonna fix that. So see where it says group over here on there, uh, under the kick track. We're going to select that and go external one. Okay. Now, the issue with that is that nothing changed <laughs> because everything that goes through external one is going through machine two as well. So we're actually going to select external two, which is, as you can see, the kick now is coming in through here. All right. External three for the snare and external four for the hi hats. And I think I did something wrong here. Let's take a look. Maybe two. That's fine. There we go. Sorry, I had the wrong audio from channel selected there. And this is actually really convenient too because you can see where all the signals are coming out of. So that's your kick, that's your uh, snare, and that's your hi-hat. So that's correct. This is correct as well, and kick. All right, so that's pretty simple. Uh, we got the audio working nice and smoothly. As you can see, no longer, you are no longer uh, getting any sort of signal out of the machine um, unless you actually play one of the instruments that is um, is actually not in that routing system. So if I play, for example, more cowbell, <laughs> you can see that coming out through a machine. And respectively, we can actually route that out through a different channel as well. Um, we can create individual bus tracks over here and bus out entire um, setups from different groups, if you like. So uh, the, the possibilities are pretty much endless um, within, the, within the 15, 16 tracks that you have to work with. If you're like me, you want a little bit more uh, control than what Machine gives you, although uh, Machine 2 is pretty powerful. Um, I personally like to work with, uh, work with Ableton Live as far as sequencing all of the... Uh, all the MIDI data and the clips, uh, it, it's just a lot easier for me to work with clips in here and an arrangement view than actually working with the pattern system inside of machine. So, but um, on that same token, I, I also like to sketch some of the ideas within machine and then take that into Ableton Live. So the easiest way for me to do that and why also I set it, uh, set up the, uh, the tracks with the external instrument and the MIDI routing is so that we can initially just uh, click on sounds here, that's fine. Uh, click this uh, export pattern button and as you can see it creates three clips. They're all respectively named based on the instruments inside a machine and all we do is just drop that in there Whoops, uh, let's flip back over to machine. Uh, let's go on to a pattern that's empty. So just to make sure that that's not playing, as you can see, nothing is playing right now. Now we're just gonna go ahead and launch these three. Now, as you can see, trust me, this is not a mistake, <laughs> but as you can see, um, everything is basically going through just the kick channel 
Now the way that we fix that is the MIDI settings within within machine. So we're flipping back over to uh, the mixer window. As you can see on channel one, two, and three, we have MIDI coming in through the all setting, and that we want to change. Uh, now you remember on the external instruments over here, we routed out to MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, and MIDI channel three. So one, there's a couple of quick things I want to show you here. Uh, first, let's just get everything routed out. So MIDI channel one, oops, my mistake. MIDI channel one, oh, I'm sorry. MIDI channel in, not out, my mistake. MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, and MIDI channel three. By the way, um, just clicking on the text over here is equivalent to activation. So if I flip back over here and go into the input, MIDI, it's the same thing as turning this on and it will not work unless you have this turned on. So for example, uh, we're on the kick, right? See how it's active? Now I'm gonna deactivate this and flip back over and you can see it's no longer uh, highlighted. So now it's active. Simple, right? And going back over to Ableton Live, as you can see, you have your MIDI out going to uh, machine, triggering the samples, the samples being sent back out into your individual channels. So you can take this and, whoops, uh, let's take all three. Just drag those over. Stretch them out, do whatever you want. Go in here and yeah, modify your samples. If you're into death metal, just you know, da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, hit play. So as you can see, you have a tremendous amount of control over a machine, routing things out individually. Um, because this can actually, not that the internal uh, effects and stuff in machine are not powerful, but you know if you're working in a situation where your entire song is drawn out on a on a DAW, it's good to have the, you know, that kind of continuity uh, as far as being able to run, you know whatever mixing mixing techniques that you want instead of having to do things through an internal bus and you know have to work th work around uh different types of workflows so if you're used to working in a DAW this will tremendously help you especially if you love machine so um i hope this tutorial helped you guys so uh just feel free to comment let me know what you thought um if you have any other advice or tips or any types of tutorials that you want to see, go ahead and let us know and uh, we'll try to get that done for you. Thanks so much. Again, this uh, tutorial is brought to you by MachineSkills.com. My name is Loki and I'll see you next time.